How's it going everyone and welcome back to the next lesson in the series making an FPS manager in Godot 4. Today we are finally giving our player the ability to pick up weapons. If it's your first time here I highly recommend you check out the full playlist pinned down below where you will learn how to create an FPS player controller using Godot's resources. As always I appreciate a like and subscribe and let's get started. Okay, so if we want to be able to pick up our three weapons, then we need to create rigid bodies for all three of them. So I'll create a new scene here and I'm just going to navigate to where the models are and I'll click other node and it's going to be a rigid body. So I'll search for that and select it. Um, I'll rename this to the name of the weapon that I'm creating. So for this one, it's going to be Blaster M. I'll drag that model in. Um, I'll make it local and I'll just delete these empties like you've seen me do a bunch of times before. I'll also reset the transform on this. Let's come down and transform, just reset that so it's in the center. And the easiest thing to do to create a collision shape is just to click this button here where it says mesh. Um, I'm going to go with single convex collision. It's a pretty good in-between shape. And as you can see, I've got a collision shape that pretty closely conforms to the shape of the weapon and I'll save this. I'll create a new folder and I'll call it spawnable weapons and I'll hit save on that scene there. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two weapons. I'll speed through this. Okay, so I've got my three rigid bodies all set up and now we can add a script to this. So I'll hit this little script button and I'll actually call the script something like weapon pickup because we're gonna use this in all three and I'll type at export var weapon name and that is going to mirror exactly the name of the weapon on the uh, resource. So we'll just make that an export variable so we don't need to name it here. And the next one will be the current ammo. So this will be the ammo that sits on the weapon when you pick it up or drop it. And the third variable will be uh, reserve ammo as well. You could have one variable for ammo, but I think it's just a little bit easier to have two, to be honest, but it's, it's really just a design option at this point. So. We'll drag that script onto all three of these and we'll also name these weapons. So just make sure that they're the same as your resource. You come back over to this. If I click on the weapon manager and I've got all three of these weapon name, blaster I, this is lowercase and then capital. So I need to just make sure that they're exactly the same. Otherwise this, what I'm gonna do is not gonna work. Um, and you wanna make the current ammo and the reserve ammo something reasonable. It's really up to you how you want it to look. This is going to start to change a lot when you program the ability to drop these weapons because it'll need to be whatever the ammo is at that time. And so I'm just checking to make sure that these three weapons that I'm going to create have got um, just the standard current ammo and reserve ammo that I've set up on the resource so that they're exactly the same. But they can really be anything you want. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll need to also just double check physics layers. So if you don't remember, we've got a set of physics layers that we've set up. Uh, we've got world, player, object, and weapons. Now, layer four for us is going to be where we put the weapons. So I'll come down to collision object 3D and I'll select layer four. And I'll unselect layer one and I'll leave one masked and I'll mask four as well for good measure. And I'll also mask three for objects just in case you drop a weapon onto an object and you want it to interact. So I'll do the same with all three weapons. Uh, you could also mask the player as well, like if you wanted to walk through the weapons and you wanted them to move around and interact like that. But uh, in my sort of testing, I found that that wasn't a very nice experience for the player, especially if you're trying to pick up weapons and the collision shape is moving things around. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll come back over to the FPS character and we'll click the little plus button and we'll add an area 3D node to the FPS character and we'll also need to add a collision shape. But first I'll rename that to pick up detection and I'll add a collision shape 3D to that. Um, I'm just gonna make this a box and I'm gonna make it sort of, I'll bring it up to be the same size as the player so that you can't pick things up below the ground. Uh, realistically, this is just going to be something that you decide, you know, what works best for your game. I'm gonna make this a little bit wider on both axes just so that there's plenty of room so that the player doesn't have any problems picking up weapons. Don't have to get too close to them. Okay. All right, so of course we need to also set up the collision on the area. So I'll click the pick 
top detection node and I'll come to the collision and I'll unselect world and unselect the mask and we just want to mask layer four. So that way it'll detect things on layer four, which is where our weapons will be. I'll connect the signal, so I'll click node and I'll click signal, body entered and I'll double click on the weapon manager node. Okay, so I'll just remove some space here. And on this, we are going to need to set up a few things. So we know the variable is going to be weapon name. So I'm going to print that out just to show you guys. Make sure that everything we've set up so far is working. Just absolutely make sure that this variable is the same. I'm not adding any kind of checks here. So the assumption is that it definitely exists on the object we're going to detect. It's not the safest, but it will work if we do things properly. I'll jump back over to the main scene that we're working on and I'll add a new node here and I'm just going to call it weapons and I'll drag those three spawnable weapons that we created into that node. Um, I'll select them all and just bring them up so that they're inside the sort of play area that I've created here and I'll just move them apart from each other so that they're there on their own. I'll give them a little bit of space so we don't run over to it at the same time. Now I'll just run this game and we'll see that as we walk over the top of them, well, actually you can't see because the, the game's in the way, so I'll just tab out of that. You can see Blaster Eye. And as I walk over these, they print out the name. So just make sure that everything's working up to this point. Um, and you know, everything looks good, nothing's crashing. Okay, so now that we can detect our weapons, we can come back over to the weapon manager and we can start adding some logic here. So first thing I wanna do is create a variable called weapon in stack. I'm going to make that equal to weaponstack.find and I'll just type in there body.weapon name. What this will do is just first check that we don't already have the weapon in our possession. So this will return a negative one if it's not in the stack. If you guys don't remember what the stack is, it is just a list of weapons that the player currently has in their possession. So if it's not in that, it is going to return a negative one and that will tell us that we need to pick up the weapon. Okay, so the other thing we need to remember is exactly how our state machine works. So we need to eventually call the exit function and pass in a string to the next weapon. Now, the way that these rigid bodies are set up is that they have a string reference to the weapon. So obviously this is fairly early stages. We don't have the ability to drop. We don't have the ability to pick up ammo from, that, from weapons on the ground. So we'll call exit, which will just handle everything for us. So I said, if weapon in stack is equal to negative one, then we need to pick up the weapon. And I'll come down here, and the first thing we need to do is actually add that weapon to our weapon stack. So I'll type weapon stack dot push front, and I'll push that value body dot weapon name. Okay, so now that the weapon is in the stack, we're able to switch to it, and we'll also be able to switch back to it if we switch off it. We need to zero out the ammo in the resource. Resources are exclusive. You generally don't have multiple copies of them. So the resources are always there. It's just we're controlling whether or not we have access to them with the weapon stack. And so what we need to do when we pick up a weapon is actually overwrite the ammo and the reserve ammo with the values from the gun on the ground. So that's why the gun on the ground has those values. And so what's that? that's what we'll do here. So we'll type weapon list and we'll do square brackets and I'll just paste in body dot weapon name because it's a little bit faster and I'll type dot current ammo and I'll set that equal to the body dot current ammo. Okay, I'll just copy that because it's a little bit easier and I'll paste that down and I'll just change current ammo to reserve ammo and I'll do the same thing for body dot current ammo. I'll change that to body dot reserve ammo with lowercase this time. Okay, so we're going to overwrite those values and we're going to also emit the signal update weapon stack and we'll pass in the weapon stack. And then finally, we want to type exit body dot weapon name and we should be good to go. Last thing we need to do is, of course, delete the rigid body because we've picked it up. Okay, so let's run that and see how we go. So the only weapon that we can pick up is this one on the left here. I'll walk over to it and it looks like it's picked it up okay. And these ones here obviously don't get picked up because they already exist. And I'm not updating the weapon indicator, which is what controls our position in the array called weapon stack. 
And so when you pick up a weapon and then you switch, it won't always be the weapon that you're expecting. So if we switch to the second weapon, the stack would pick it up. The next time we switch, it's going to be there. So you would expect to go back to Blaster N, but you actually ended up on Blaster I, I think it's called. So we can fix that. Um, we're not gonna fully fix it until we start to drop weapons as well. So we've got just a regular int controlling our position in the weapon stack. To be honest, I think this can be improved and we might do that next episode um, when we fully fleshed out how this works. So one option that we have is that we can make the weapon indicator zero. So that will always just count up from there. And because that's where we pushed it to the front, it's gonna work pretty much off the bat. This is a really simple solution, but depends on how many weapons you've got in the game, that might be really annoying for the player. So instead what we can do is we can type insert and we'll need body dot weapon name and a variant, which will just be weapon indicator. And we can delete that. And that's actually around the wrong way. So I'm just gonna swap that out. This will be our final solution, weapon stack dot insert brackets, weapon indicator, comma body dot weapon name. So what we're gonna do here is just insert the weapon at the position that we're at in the weapon indicator right now. And that'll sort of, you know, if we're on the second weapon, we're gonna put it at the third position and it just feels a little bit more natural rather than resetting the entire weapon stack. And like I said, we'll fix this up at the end of the drop tutorial. So don't worry too much about this. So I run this just to show you how it looks. So we switch to Blaster N and you can see now that it shows up in between the two. And so when you switch up, it's Blaster N and when you switch down is where you expect it to be. So I think this is the best solution. Um, there are currently no limits to how many weapons you can pick up in this game and we're not gonna change that, um, but yeah, so I think this works best. Definitely comment down below if you've got a better way of doing it because I sort of wrapped my brain over this for a couple months and this is the best thing that I could come up with. Um, but if you've got any suggestions, let me know. I'd be happy to hear them. Okay, so that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate a like and subscribe. If you wanna get access to these videos in advance, then you can jump over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash shaft games. I'm normally about a month ahead in videos there. Next week, we will look at giving our player the ability to drop these weapons. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games, and I will see you then.